Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to be joined today by Mike Gifford. Mike is responsible for the accessibility at Drupal, uh, working on the Drupal 8 core. Is that correct, Mike? Have I got my details muddled? Or uh, or is that but, um, uh, more or less correct? That's more or less correct. There's there's two uh, two maintainers and and uh, uh, at the moment for Drupal 8 and uh, and okay. and I'm one of them and have, and have been spearheading the accessibility initiatives in Drupal for about the last decade. Yeah, I I, I was aware that you've been there for a a long time and we we, we all seem to age in place in accessibility, right? Uh, and we put down yes. roots. Um, so, I mean, how did you first? come to, to to sort of work in the accessibility field and and uh, so tell us a little bit about um what drew you to to work in, in this field and what drew you to work also for you know drupal and uh, in terms of you know th it's really important i think platforms uh that are hosting uh websites and 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 cms uh it's a it's sort of a neglected area um, so how, how did you come to work in this area of accessibility? Well, it's, it's about 3% of the internet at the moment, so or, or the web. So it's a, it is a reasonably large, you know, chunk of, of the internet. It's really not as big as, as WordPress. But, but I guess, I mean, I started my business in 99, um, back before content management systems were a thing. And, and back in 2001, I set up my own content management system. But then, you know, it, it became a, a difficult thing to try and set up and maintain. So um, it was a it was an open source tool, but and I, I learned a lot through the process of developing it, but just couldn't keep up with the the rate of change that I saw in the Drupal community, and, and decided to go off and to move from my own CMS that that um, was particularly dealing dealing with multilingual websites, um, and moved to Drupal, which which was was uh, you know, hopefully going to be be addressing that or making that easier um, in a in a you know in a reasonable period of time, and so. So uh, back around 2005, 2006, I went off and made a transition to just starting to uh, to move my clients over to Drupal. Um, now I uh, so I've been um, you know, involved in open source projects and and uh, and and trying to go off and and, and aware of of open source as a philosophy of of, of a way of doing things and, and collaborating together for for um, for quite a while. And and it was was a um, so that was. Um, sort of one side of, of how I got into to Drupal. Um, I got into accessibility um, before that. I was just by through through a number of friends who who have um, who have a, a uh, who sort of introduced me to uh, disability rights and and uh, you know learning about um, how other people go off and, and uh, interact with the world. So I was, was certainly uh, sensitized to that, but hadn't really done done anything to sort of learn about how to go off and, and to, to bring that into my my web except my web practice until about 2008 when I was was looking at how to transition my business and what what I you know I looked at ways to go off and make some simple improvements in in Drupal that would make it more accessible and I figured oh it's, it's already a, a standards driven community it shouldn't be that hard to go off and to fix a couple a couple accessibility Issues and then go and 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 make something that is that is accessible and and little did I know that that ten years later we're still you know just sort of you know yeah there's so much more to do and we're at the tip of the iceberg of of how to go off and and to uh, uh, in many ways go off and and, and address um, the accessibility of the, the platform that we're we're building um, now it's it's so much better than anything else but it's 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 also something that you know we know how many problems there are and how much work there needs to be done to go off and actually build something that is inclusive by default. And, and, uh, and so, so it's a, it's an interesting challenge trying to go off and to work with this, um, this community to be able to, 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 to do that. Yeah. No, th thank you. And I, um, you know, I, I know that, uh, I, know that I, I, I use CMS myself. Um, and I'm aware of obviously working in the industry that I do, of the need to to make sure that the the sites that I'm maintaining are, are accessible, but um, a lot of people aren't, and so but but the workflow of of putting content up onto um, right onto a website is is a really crucial part of maintaining accessibility. You can build an accessible website and then watch its accessibility degrade yep. 
the time as you you hand over the control of that website to the marketing team or the you know the the, the interns and the graduates to fill it with beautiful inaccessible content so 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 yeah. what's your um your approach to sort of uh, maintaining awareness for the people that are using your CMS how do you you keep accessibility front of mind for for those users well there's there's um i guess a lot of it comes down to to um some some initial opportunities we had about about making drupal um back, making drupal 7 more accessible and 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 uh um, I was able to to hire um, a an incredibly bright uh, blind developer for for a summer to to work on exclusively on on Drupal accessibility and and uh, Everett Zufeld uh, while he was working with me was able to go off and make um, a great many contributions to to the Drupal community um, but but also to um, to sensitize the need to go off and, and to to make this this the accessibility goals not just about front facing information. We wanted to go off and make the back end accessible, and and make sure that a blind user or somebody with any other disability could not only view the content but also edit it, administer it, and develop with it, and and make sure that that we're eliminating um, barriers throughout the interface. Um, so we did that. With Drupal 7, and, and then then when we were started to work with Drupal 8 and ATAG 2.0 had been um, released, we we started to go off and, and to to uh, to look at that, and we we'd already addressed most of uh, of ATAG uh, 2.0 um, uh, Part A uh, for for the the requirements because we we've already been looking at how to go off and make sure the back end is accessible. Again, not that it's perfectly accessible, not that it meets all the criteria. But we we built in a lot of structures into the the um, the back end to make sure that that part A so that the the part focusing on on making that the authoring experience accessible was already done and taken care of. Um, so we didn't have to do that much work in that. I mean, there's still more to be done. But but most of the work was that needed to be done on ATAG was looking at the um, uh, looking at part uh, part B, which is which is really the most interesting part of, of of ATAG. It's a part of how do we make the CMS be something that helps authors and actually helps authors produce more accessible content. Um, so one of the pieces we we did for this was um, just making um, the the, uh, the the need to create alt text required by default, and yeah. to do that across the board. So that I mean, all text is one of the low hanging fruits of accessibility. It's it's a, a really, a, it's a no brainer, but as far as you know, we're still the only CMS out there that, that has a requirement in the initial defaults so that if you're uploading an image through a WYSIWYG editor or through the, the uh, you know, elsewhere within the interface, that the default is that you need to have alt text. And you know you can override that um, both as, on a pr programmatically or or as uh, as a user because there's sometimes when, when it's not appropriate to go up into to have alt text but but even just having having that that um, that ability to go up and to force users to to uh, when they're adding content to to make it just that much more difficult to to do the wrong thing and make make doing the right thing just seem well, just part of the workflow, right? As opposed to something like, oh, we'll we'll add the alt text later if somebody notices. Like it's yeah. it's you're going to get a warning, you're going to get get uh, blocked by by the system if you try and do that. And so, you know, just just to 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 break that system down, and we, we've added a bunch of other things like um, making sure that that you can create uh, accessible tables, and that we have that set up so that when you're you're creating a view of tables that, that you have the option to create the caption and summary, um, and that that information is there. We've added spell checks so that there's the ability to go off and to, um, to, to make sure that your content, as you're creating the content, by default, you're, you're spell checking your, your content and so that you're not producing typos, which, again, a screen reader is, you know, can't be expected to properly pronounce a misspelled word, right? So, yeah. you know, trying to add that level of, of discussion there. So, um, yeah. I just because some of our audience is, is um, less familiar with some of the acronyms, ATAG is the Authoring Tool Accessibility Guidelines. So this is the, it's the less well-known but equally important sister piece of guidelines from the W3C, um, uh, which is which is focused on on the tools that we use to deliver 
stuff on the web as opposed to the content, which uh, you know, most people are familiar with the web content accessibility guidelines, but a tag is is equally important. And I just thought I'd just clarify that for for our audience who are not necessarily all quite so technical. So, um, but it's it's really it's a really very important part of the infrastructure of an accessible and inclusive web. And I know Antonio's got a question, so I'm going to hand over to him. Thank you, Neil. No, my, uh, uh, no, I, I know that you work with a lot of um, or organizations, you know, in the public and uh, in the in, and also in the private sector. Some of them, they drive and they relate with. They have millions millions of users visiting visiting their websites uh, right. every day. You know, it's basically something at scale. Uh, but you no, know, so sometimes people still struggle to understand, you know, accessibility. Why? Well, based in your experience and and, and uh, the feedback that you get from the organizations you work with, can you tell us you know, a little bit? You know, what is the ROI of behind creating a, an accessible website for them? Uh, is is it just follow, oh you follow a checklist and it's done? Uh, can you give us a little bit of of a, an insight, or or you can even say you no? Know, is it does really ROI make sense, or we need to find another way of explaining it and take the value from it? So, I mean, that's a it's always interesting to try to figure out what is the motivator for for our clients, and and, and part of it comes down to legislation. So, uh, in Ontario, um, there's the AODA that that is a certain legislation uh, that the Ontarians with Disability Act. Uh, we also have the uh, in the federal government in, in Canada, there's there's legislation um, with to try and make sure that all of, of the public facing websites uh, and, and content meet WCAG 2.0 AA after the the Donna Jodhan case where where a blind woman was not able to go off and apply for a job uh, that she was qualified for and and, and that she she met um, you know uh, problems with with the the job board in, in the hiring process and sued the government successfully not for for money she wasn't looking for financial contributions what she wanted was to be able to see a change in, in government policies and practices so that was a an, an, a very bold a bold decision for her to go off and to do that and, and it was was in many ways quite successful um so so those are, are sort of two two reasons that people come uh for uh, to us for for accessibility so the, the main is tied to, to to legislation and policy of of, uh, of governments in Canada, uh, or for that matter, uh, the fear of lawsuits in the the United States. So we, we get people who come come for us for for, for that reason as well. Um, but it's it's a I think that's a really um, it, it's it's you know fear is not a great motivator, and I I would I would love to go off and have people um, sort of understand more about how they're they're benefiting or how how the 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 rest of of um, uh of our our our, our society is, is impacted and how many people uh are, are touched by accessibility and and uh if you look at at uh um the the permanent the temp temporary the situational disabilities um it's a it's quite a large number of the the portion of the population um you know all you, you need to do is try and go up and and, and see uh, see your website up on a on a screen that's that's that doesn't that uh, if you're it's being presented on a on a um, uh, like on a the, you push it over onto a screen like me for an LCD projector uh, to see how how if you don't have a sufficiently dark room it's very difficult to see gray text and uh, and that's something that affects a lot of people um, regardless of what what uh, how good their eyesight is it's just you know the the projector is good enough for for a lighted a lighted room some of the time. Um, and that's so common in conferences that that uh, you know what what people are expecting from their desktop is very different from what the real world world situation is. Um, so so I think I, I I do want to go off and 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 do more to try and, and think about the cultural reasons and the cultural values of of organizations uh, looking to embrace uh, inclusion as part of of how they do work. Um, not only because because well the baby boomers you know in in the western western civilization the baby boomers are the the biggest you know driver of of economic um you know decision making and political power that in in most of the western world and they're all losing their vision they're all you know having mobility issues they're all issues you know, like issues with with um suddenly having difficulty navigating websites or like 
the, the problems of aging of that population is, is really, um, really important. And not that they necessarily consider um, aging as being an, an accessibility issue. I think that there still is a lot of stigma around accessibility and, and within, within that population, but, but that's really what it is. And, and uh, it's a, a increasing accessibility problems with, with age. And, and, and this is a population that's really never been denied anything. And to, to have, have a, you know, I don't think that, that the senior executives in their, their position in, in, uh, on boards of directors or as, as shareholders are going to be satisfied with with a, um, a you know having not being able to have access to the digital tools that they have have grown to to embrace and depend on. If if you look back if you look That's back the, if you look back to the beginning of your career, and 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 you and and you somehow revisit that period of of time, and and then you come back today, um, how far have we been in terms of? Uh, uh, accessibility. Are we are we in a better situation today, or we are still answering the same questions than let's say a few, ten years ago? Um, I think that that there's been so much great work on training and on on um, education um, that's that's available, and, and there's there's so many more good resources and, and a stronger community now than there ever has been before. Um, the problem is, is that the web moves so quickly that that just any any technology in the internet is is moving at such a fast pace that that there's there's really um, very little opportunity for for accessibility to catch up. It is um, as long as we're um, we're going off and, and tacking on accessibility at the end of the process, then then it's it's is going to be something that. That is is a is a is an afterthought that is is going to um, you know, disappoint people and and uh, you you can look at, at what's happened recently with with the uh, the Gutenberg uh, project and, and uh, WordPress and how the accessibility team within WordPress was um, yeah was 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 very frustrated with with the the, the lack to make sure that 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 accessibility was being properly considered and that that. That there is going to be a um, to make sure that that the new release of the the interface isn't less accessible than than the current release. Um, and uh, you know, I think they're they're meeting a lot of friction within the, the developers on it because there's 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 so much work that needs to be done to rebuild their backend with with a a uh, uh, to, to be accessible using React. Um, and and so you know, I, I think that that the more we can focus on on getting um, getting people to to, uh, to bring in accessibility and open source together, and find ways to fund that, um, the, the the better we're going to be. Like there, there's there's right now a, a fairly large accessibility industry. Um, that, you know, you go to CSUN or M Enabling, and you can see some organizations who have have done quite well by going off and, and providing. Um, a, uh, you know, accommodation for for uh, for people with disabilities, and that's great. That needs to happen. But but if you look at the effort to try and fix the problems at the source, who's who are the people who are actually going off and and looking to to address the source sources of the problems around accessibility, which often comes down to common libraries that are being used, you know, around the internet. And you say, well, what are the resources that are going into that? And it's 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 almost nothing. Um, yeah. There, there's been very little um, support for for Drupal or WordPress or React or like it's all the all of the money for the industry is is downstream on fixing site specific problems. And if you do that, you're never going to catch up with the rate of of change of the internet. We're always going to be you know five or ten or twenty steps behind what was happening on the web. Yeah, and it's always expensive. Yeah, the, like, I wasn't yeah. going to mention I wasn't going to mention Gutenberg because that's such a mess in terms of political, emotional <laughs> technology. Yeah, I mean, um, as to what's happened, but it is a great example of where um, accessibility has been forgotten, and where if they'd done it from the point where they were starting to design the new product, it wouldn't have cost them a lot. Now it's it's you know. It could break the whole thing. Uh, so, so um, the 
the crucialness of getting this stuff considered early on to get the people that are product owners uh, and um, you know, the people that are deciding when they're going to develop new products to understand that this needs to be part of that initial process is, is really important because you're right, as we, we bring in new technologies, what we see is we have a, a, a sort of technology sort of indicator like this and you have a lagging indicator for accessibility. So um, there's always yeah. those steps behind and it's only when we start designing it in that it, it becomes part of that. And that's going to require not just a, a change in technology and I think there are certain things that some technologies can do to help. Um, but it's going to change. It's going to require a change in attitude, and a, and a change in, yeah. in approach it, as well. And it's 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 totally um, like a lot of it comes down to the 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 core team behind the software project. And I was really impressed to see with the Drupal community, both in the release of Drupal seven and Drupal eight, that the the Drupal community was able to push the release date back because of of accessibility problems that weren't fixed yet um, mm -hmm. and to deal with a lot of, of frustrations by the process of trying to go off and to to address that and and that's that's really difficult and and, and to have have people who are are senior in other areas of, of, of leadership of the team going off and saying we're willing to go off and invest time in this we're willing to go off and to put put the release on on hold and push this project release back because because accessibility is a core gate, just as important as, as security, just as important as performance, just as important as usability, we have to go off and consider accessibility as part of that. And okay, not that it has to be perfect, but but you sort of at some points have to draw the line in the sand and say, here's something that we need to do. Or if we can't do it, um, like a, an example in, in Drupal 8, we, we wanted to get um, the inline form editors um, set up so that we could have, have uh, um, like in any forms that were being being created could have good error messages if there's a, an error associated with that. And and we we got it into core and then it started to notice that there were all of these bugs that started to happen. So we had to pull it out of core in order to go into to make sure that that um, that we we were able to go off and, and that it wasn't destroying core functionality of the project. Um, but this the, but the idea of going off and, and making um, accessible web forms produce error messages like making those error messages accessible by default is a it's a big challenge and something that that um, is not that I, again I don't know of any other you know CMS out there that has made us uh, a, a reasonable effort to go off and build that type of accessibility in by default so that that's just how how sites are done and, and we we don't have that um, yet enabled by default but it is part of core and it's a it's a core module that that um, that you know still um, needs more work, but but is, is one that 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 can work very well for for a lot of uh, a lot of organizations that want to be able to um, to make sure that that their error messages are are as accessible as as the rest of their site. Yeah, uh, and if we think about how important forms are, it, it's almost it's quite surprising how little effort has gone into the accessibility of, of such an important thing because forms are the entry point to products and services and banking and all of this kind of stuff. If you can't get the form right, you can't get access to all of these core things that the internet enables. So yeah. they're, they're the gateway. Um, and yeah. as someone that is dyslexic, I struggle with forms. I mean, actually web forms are better for me than paper ones. I used to be that person that would take uh, a sheaf of forms when they were paper forms, because I know that the first five would end in the bin because I'd, I'd filled them out wrong. Um, but right. and, and at least with web forms, if you if you've got proper error handling, that that you know that makes a huge difference for someone like me. You know, it is you know I'm going yeah. to make a mistake. Uh, yeah, most people will make some mistake regardless of whether they have dyslexia or not. But I'm definitely going to make one and. Please handle it gracefully. Take me to the point that I've got wrong. Tell me what I need to do, um, and then also tell me what I need to do in a way that's accessible to assistive technology. There's there's two or three elements to this that really need to happen to allow 
people yeah. to be successful doing this kind of thing. So, and, um, and it's, it's yeah, it's something that, that for, almost nobody tests or looks at. Yeah. Yeah, kudos Thank to you, you for, for you. getting that into core because it, it, it's, re it's really such an important thing. And I don't think people really think, oh, it's forms, you know, that's not pretty or whatever. But but they, they are, they're the key yeah. to, to all of these things that we rely on for the internet. Because if you don't fill in the form right, you don't you don't get access to the product. You can't you can't um, uh, become sign up to the service. You can't do all of the things that you could then do afterwards. So. You can't get through the gate. That's that's right. the definition of inaccessibility. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's one of these these interesting things dealing with 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 the way that Drupal is constructed. There's a there's a forms API. So uh, both in, we made a lot of improvements in Drupal seven and have continued it in Drupal eight. But but we've there's a central place where where forms are built and structure that forms are are done. So. Because we've fixed it at the source, when people are building forms for other modules, most of the time people repeat what was done and leverage what was done in, in the core. Like people, um, there's a, the, the, the line that um, the good developers are lazy developers, right? Because they just sort of take what's there and, and rebuild it, refactor it to what they need and are not trying to go off and recreate the wheel. Um, so if you present people with good models and, and provide an example for them to, to work on, then then they're going to go off and to build from that and be able to have better better products at the end of the day. So they're they're not necessarily thinking about how to build something accessibly. They're just how do I follow what is the best practice of the community of the of, of software development that I'm using? And if I'm following that, then I should be okay. And and that should be the, the case. And 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 we've 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 tried to go off and, and make sure that that's that's there so that when you're adding modules um, or themes that that a lot of that those that stuff is built in, so you don't have to, to, um, to, to think, the developer doesn't have to think about it or become an accessibility specialist in order to go off and, and to inherit some best practices. No, I, I, and, and, and that's it. I mean, we, what we really want is, is really rich component libraries that enable people to compile websites quickly, easily, and those components yeah. that we're sharing with people are already accessible by default because essentially, you know, people aren't, they shouldn't be having to think about this stuff because the building blocks that they're using should contain that stuff. So we, like you say, that's taking it right back to the, to, to the very beginning because people aren't even, right. I love that, and people that are building products, that are building websites, they're not coding particularly. They're, they're, put, they're compiling stuff from a bunch of different right. components. You know, we're not, we're, we're not handcrafting HTML here anymore. Um, for the most part, so no. um, I mean, you you can't do that. But why would you bother? <laughs> it's it's you know, you're going to use a framework at some point, whether it's a content management yeah. system or something like Bootstrap, because because the web is so complicated. If you want to have a, a a mobile friendly website that is is uh, you know geared to go off and and, and to, to meet all of the needs of your users, like starting starting from from scratch and hand coding it is just I mean, it's a wonderful learning experience, but it's a horrible waste of time. You know? yeah. So unless you've got really highly customized needs, don't do it. I mean, it's just, this is like why when I hear people going off and building content management systems, and it's like, wow, that's a really great way to learn, but what a waste of time. Like, really, there's, there's yeah. enough good ones out there that you shouldn't need to go off and, and build a new content management system, you know, unless you're super eager to go off and learn Go or whatever else, whatever, you know, funky languages coming up that you, you want to go off and experiment with. But, you know, there's enough out there that you don't need to, to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. yeah. Good point. And, and there's, there's also just so many places. There's, there's places where people will go off and try and reinvent the wheel and, and inevitably you're going to get it wrong because you're, you're going to like with, with uh, well, both, both Drupal and WordPress, there are, there are, hundreds if not thousands of hours of accessibility work that's, that have gone into to making those products more accessible. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's being, uh, with Drupal 7, there were, in Drupal 7 and 8, there were at least 400 people who contributed to the accessibility issues that, that got into core at, at one point or another. And that, that's, a, that's a lot of people. And if you're trying to go off and, and do this with some custom code, like is your custom code gonna be better and more accessible than the inputs from 400 other people? Like, not likely. So, you know, trying to get people to stop 
stop wasting their time and start trying to go up and find a good framework that they can build on that, that meets their needs. Yeah. So my, no, uh, just just a few weeks ago, uh, Google uh, launched their Pixel 3, and they call it you know, a kind of an AI phone. Now, we have, uh, right. we, have, uh, we have Alexa, we have uh, so many techno new technology coming to market and being used in so many different ways. So if you look to, you know, to technology today, what are things that are exciting you the most? And you say, oh, there's a really good potential to bring this uh, to accessibility. We can somehow use commercial solutions and use it in accessibility as well. What are the things that are catching your eye today? Well, I'm definitely interested in in Alexa and and sort of voice control and voice interaction. Um, the the folks at uh, Mozilla are doing some interesting work with um, with text to speech interaction and building that right in. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm definitely interested in that. I do uh, uh, doing three six like with both virtual reality and and, and interested in where where that where virtual reality and augmented reality are going. Um, but but when I'm looking at at these these sort of new um, future technologies or, or present technologies, but they're they're not not being um, widely adopted at this point. Um, it's like what William Gibson said: the the future is already here; it's just not very evenly distributed. Um, so with these these new technologies, a lot of them, well, all, all of them, basically depend on having well structured semantic data to go off and organize them. So you you need to have well structured data in order to take advantage of, of artificial intelligence. And if you don't have well structured data, then the AI isn't going to be able to make good sense of your content. Um, and if you're if you're wanting to go off and, and use uh, Alexa, then then again you you have to go off and, and have well structured data so that you can collect and organize your information and make sure that you're feeding that that back into your your site and, and organize organize that information in a way that that allows you to to move ahead. So so I see that 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 accessibility is also um, a way to try and make sure that your your content is is uh, is future compatible. Um, so whatever system you're going to want to be able to, to use, whatever kind of interaction you're going to want to be able to have, if you're creating and maintaining content that is is accessible, you're going to be much better off. Um, so looking at things like uh, uh, PDF files, like why on earth are we still using PDF files? I'm still baffled by that. I mean, other than the fact that they're they're useful for print purposes. Um, so from from the ability uh, to sort of reproduce the the printed page, they make sense. But they don't make sense for accessibility, and they don't make sense for mobile. And we know that most people are are jumping to mobile as their primary source of of of, of, of information um, and, and scanning information on a regular basis. So if you're going to be excluding those people, like why would you bother? Why would you not go off and default to EPUB and have that be your primary format of of a portable document, and have PDF be simply there as a backup for when you want to go off and have a um, have a format that is 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 uh, uh, that you want to print out, and, and frankly, I don't know that many people who actually want to print out a document and, and read a document in a in a paper format. So let's try and make sure that we're we're doing better at producing um, you know nice, uh, uh, attractive, portable documents in in a in a format like EPUB that has so much of that semantic ability built into it, and that then we can start to engage with our AI to be able to say. Well, let's, let's be able to parse that information and, and we know that it's well structured so we can start making sense of that information. We don't want to go off and, and give um, our AI a whole bunch of badly structured inaccessible uh, PDF documents to work from because that's that's not going to work well in the end. Like, the AI will not be able to learn the meaning behind that if, if you give it bad data. Yeah. Make sense? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Rubbish in, rubbish out. And, and and that's, that's like, true for every yeah. system. Yeah. Um, that's right. And, and, that's right. And it's certainly true for, for AI. And yet, yet it's what people forget all the time. Right? Yeah. It's certainly true for AI where you, you, you've got human assisted learning as the, the first step of, of the, the, the teaching process for the AI. If you give it crap, you'll get crap out. It, it really is as, is, is, right. as simple as that. Um, so, so yeah, we, we we need to we need to feed 
good quality information, have good frameworks for feeding that information in, and some good kind of ethical reference frameworks as well. This is a big, uh, big hobby horse of mine around uh, uh, AI is making sure that that we're that we're framing the questions and shaping the AI and 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 mindful of our ethical responsibilities as we create algorithms that that don't accidentally or unintentionally exclude or, or, or lead to prejudice against people. Um, we've reached the end of our half hour. I, it's gone really quickly. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing with us, Mike. It's been, no a, it's been a real pleasure. I'm looking forward to um, you know, joining us on Twitter. I'm sure we're going to have a really interesting discussion. I need to thank Barclays and Mike Tillitex for their continued support for, for Access Chat. And um, anyway, thank you again. It's been a, been a real pleasure. I'm, I'm looking forward to the praying with them next week. So uh, you'll all be online and, and uh, tweeting madly. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Warm those fingers up. That's right. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Okay.